Hello everybody. Our next camera is a Bell & Howell Dial 35-2. It's really the Canon Dial 35-2. I don't know if their relationship was like Honeywell and Pentax, but Bell & Howell sold a lot of Canon products in the United States. It was introduced in 1968. It's a half frame camera, but unlike a lot of them, the film travels vertically so you still end up with uh, landscape frames. Uh, each image is 24 millimeters by 18 millimeters. It has a 28 millimeter SE lens. I don't know what SE means. I think that was the fast, faster one, so maybe special edition. Uh, it goes from f2.8 to f22. It's five elements in three groups. A little B trying to help with the video. Uh, it's zone focusing, goes from 0.8 meters, a little over two and a half feet to infinity. In the viewfinder you get uh, mountains, trees, and a person's head. But uh, the Bell and Howell edition gives the, the ranges in feet here. I believe the Canon one had that in meters. It has a Seikosha behind the lens shutter doesn't have a great range. It goes from a 30th to one 250th of a second. This version does not have bulb. Um, it's normally uh, shutter priority, but it takes the 1.3 volt mercury battery. The speed ranges for ISO go from 10 to 1000, and it's interesting. And the dial is from this dial and like Waterhouse stops it's actually putting different sized holes in front of the cadmium sulfide sensor. Uh, one thing that is really cool this little knob you pull it out and it takes it off of shutter priority and there's a little needle at the bottom of the viewfinder that shows you what your selected aperture is. So, I was in a hurry. I didn't even bother finding a compatible battery, so I don't know if the meter works in this because it's fully manually, fully manually settable, something like that. The 35.2, the second version of the dial, got a hot shoe. I actually got the Canon branded uh, little cover for it. You open the back of the camera with this little slider on the left and then you can see the mercury battery connection right here and there's also you can see there's no wires going to the back so these little metal pieces right here connect to these corresponding metal connectors here in the body so I think the hot shoe connection might be a little bit iffy um, I was using an old Vivitar and it didn't work well but it does have a PC sync socket, so I just used that. So I haven't, you know, dived into it to see if it's the flash or an iffy connection, you know. Anyway, the flash does work on this, just it didn't do the hot shoe with the cheap old flash that I used. So here you can see on the bottom is the take-up spool. Just load your film in here, take it across, put it in the slot and that's the direction of film travel while you're shooting. It does work at any shutter speed uh, with an electronic flash. This is where this camera's a little bit weird. It has this wind-up motor. You can hear it slipping there because there's no film in it. Um, for film advance, you press the shutter and you hear it chirp and it's advancing the film. This one did it accurately, so I'm happy about that. Although usually I hate these clockwork motors. Um, here on the side, when you're ready to rewind, you push in this R and twist it to the side and, well, it's not wound up now, it'll rewind it and you might have to you know, wind a little bit more so it finishes pulling the film back into the canister. So that does actually work pretty well. Um, the film counter is here above the shutter button on the front. That is about it. Um, your shutter speeds are selectable with this outer dial around the thing. You 
do get some really odd looks shooting with something like this. I took this on a recent trip to Las Vegas, Nevada, and you know, people are wandering around mostly taking pictures with their phones. You whip out something like this, people stop and look. It's kind of funny. Anyway, um, I had a blast with it. I've only scanned about half of it. I had a 36 exposure roll and I got all 72 images on it. So I got some more scanning to do and I'll see you then.